Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Nextdoor NetAdmin. This morning, I am working, as you can see, on a TrueNAS. Uh, specifically, it's a new TrueNAS Mini R that one of my clients got a little while ago, within the last couple of weeks. So far, I've only done the basic setup on this, making sure that, you know, it has IP addresses and a pool set up and everything else. So I thought random thought that maybe I'd walk through creating data sets for you uh, because it's not just the data set. This is going to be an SMB share uh, when I finish setting it up. So I need to create a data set. I need to create the SMB share. I need to set up snapshots, excuse me, periodic snapshots on the data set so that I have it available at the um, recovery intervals that I want to find, etc. So I just thought I'd walk us through the whole process and maybe that's of use. Uh, if I pop back to the dashboard for a second here, you will see that I am using TrueNAS Scale, which is the new Linux based version here. Um, they also have TrueNAS Core, which is also free, just like Scale is. TrueNAS Core is free BSD based. It has a long history. It's a perfectly cromulent choice for people to choose, but I chose scale for this one. So some of the GUI, some of the dialogues might be a little different between core and scale, but the options are the same if you know where to go find them. So with that out of the way, let's just get started with creating this data set. I'm only going to create one data set. I'm going to need multiples, but I'm just going to walk you through one. So the name for this one is going to be projects. Now, I did say specifically this is for SMB, and it's a nice little thing in scale that if you choose something, it'll tell you a little bit what it's going to do. I don't need NFS for this one. If it's for apps, this is for container applications. No, I don't I don't need this for container applications. Generic could be fine, but in this case, I'm just going to go SMB because that's what I need. Now, this is a new thing on me. This option to just create the SMB share is not there that I recall in any of the versions of TrueNAS Core that I have used. And I want to make sure that I have the uh, the user set up specific to what I want. So I'm going to uncheck that in this case. If I go into advanced options, a lot of this stuff is fine. I don't need it to be encrypted. I'm okay with it inheriting all of the settings from my root data set. This is one of the big ones in SMB. Windows is not case sensitive. So when you tell it that you're going to be using this for SMB, it makes the data set case insensitive as well, which is useful. I could set it to uh, read only. There we go. Yeah, but I'm not going to. Yeah. Do, 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 do. What is this snap dev? That's the only thing I don't know. Uh, no. Don't need that. ACL type inherit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's all we're going to do for creating that data set. Wonderful. Wonderful. So now I'm going to pop over to shares. And I'm going to add myself a share. And for this, I'm going to go, it's under tank, it's projects. There we go. Yeah, it will be that. I do want it enabled. I'm not going to add a description. Uh, the default share parameters are to enable the ACL, obviously. Browsable to network clients, yes. Do I want to allow guest access in this case? No, I want everybody to be authenticated. That's fine, thank you. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Other options, enable shadow copies, yes. Alternate data streams, yes. Uh, Durable handles, yes, that's fine. Um, every now and then, if I'm setting up a share which should not be browsable, this option here, 
I might change this to um, one of these other ones. There's a custom option. Yeah, private SMB data sets and shares, and then I could untick that. But, or no presets. That's the one that I would have gone with, but <laughs> all right. Default share parameters is okay for this. And so I'm just going to double check everything. Yep. And save it. Restart. I mean, I haven't used any of these, but hey, why not restart it? It's not like it takes very long. There it is. Okay, cool. I don't need the share ACL to change. I do want to change the file system ACL. Now. Okay, so we see here that it has allowed domain admins for the domain that it's attached to to have full control and that's good and domain users are allowed modify that is sufficient all i really needed to see was that domain admins was present because this is not the best place to set up your smb access control permissions the best place to do this and i've been told this by ix systems is to do it through the standard windows dialog box. If you do that through the standard windows, right click properties and change the permissions, that is better because then all of the access control entries are in the order that windows expects, which can help a little bit with performance. Okay, sure, fine. But to bootstrap that, that's what you need this interface for. And we just want to make sure that we have domain admins there and we do. Cool. So, Moving right along, we're going to go to data protection. We don't have any periodic snapshot tasks yet. That's okay. We're about to add some. Data set, projects, wonderful. We're not excluding anything. Snapshot lifetime, the lifetime. Yes, the length of time to retain the snapshot on the system. Now, I have five different levels of snap periodic snapshots that I take on user data systems, mainly because I have the space to do so. Um, the first level is every 20 minutes. <laughs> so we can go to hourly as the preset and then we're going to do custom. All right. Minutes, 0, 20, 40. All right. All hours, all days of the month, all days of the week, all. The, yeah. So, and that'll get us our every 20 minute snapshots. That's good. Okay. All right. And usually, what I will do is I will include the name of the share that I'm taking the snapshot of. I do this for multiple reasons. I might have multiple data sets that are using this particular schedule, but I may not. And so if I ever have to examine all of the snapshots on the system, I don't want to see a whole bunch of snapshots that are, you know, auto this time and I don't know which data set it's for. I don't know that that necessarily helps anything, but at least in my head, it helps to make sure that I have the data set right there in the snapshot name, and that's good. And I will also often uh, include the, because I have multiple of these snapshots, I'll also include which one it is. And in this case, it's the one that happens every 20 minutes. Okay, cool. I'm actually just going to copy this so that uh, it's easier for me to include in future. All right, and we're going to allow taking empty snapshots. It lasts for three days. We're good. All right. Now, 
Next one I'm going to do is going to be same data set, but instead I am going to take an hourly. Hourly lasts for a week. And you can, you can see the, the definitions ticking over in my mind as I do this and I'm just cross-checking everything. Okay, cool. Right. And then I create one that is daily, which is correct. That's what I want to see. Daily. Daily lasts for one month. Yep. And then you may think to yourself, this is a lot of work to have to go through if you want to uh, get everything set up properly. And yes, it is a lot of work to go through. But the good thing is you only have to do it once. And if you do it correctly, you never have to touch it again. The weekly lasts for a year. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then the last level is monthly, obviously. It's the last one that's left here. And that lasts for two years. Okay, cool. So what does this schedule do? What does this snapshot schedule do? Well, essentially, for really quick data needs, if somebody goes, oh my God, I just accidentally screwed up my presentation and then saved it, how do I get the old saved version back from before I screwed it up and closed the application and everything else? I have copies of the data and that's saved every 20 minutes. But that's a lot of snapshots. That's three per hour times 24. So you're talking about what, 72? 72 snapshots that, and that's per day. And I'm gonna keep those for three days. That's a lot of snapshots. So with that level of granularity, I can't afford to keep that for too long. So after three days, those snapshots go away. But I've got an hourly backup, and that I can keep more of because I only have 24 backups in a day, obviously. But those are kept for seven days. Okay, that's fine. That's going to be a whole bunch of them. But <clears throat> after a week, the hourly backups go away. All right, so maybe if you're like, oh man, it's been like five days since I did that. Okay, so I don't have the granularity of every 20 minutes, but I do have the granularity of every hour. After that week, what do we have? Well, we go back to the daily snapshots. The daily snapshots, one per day, and I keep those for a month. That's only 30 snapshots total, which is a manageable number. And then you have the weekly snapshots that are kept for a year. That's 52 snapshots in total. Again, a relatively manageable number. And then the monthly snapshots being kept for two years is 24 snapshots total. Again, a very manageable number. So yes, there are a lot of snapshots that will be taken for each data set that has this kind of structure, but it ages out pretty quickly so that you're left with a manageable number over time. And the further you get away from it, the less granular you can be with pulling it out of snapshots, but you still have something. And that's better than nothing. And it's also important to note, these are just for the snapshots on the device itself, on the TrueNAS. I will have other backup methods set up. Sometimes that is something that just pulls the SMB share 
and then copies it into the cloud. For this particular unit, we're going to be setting up a cloud sync task, and it's actually going to be synced into Microsoft Azure because specifically that's what the customer wanted. There's nothing wrong with Microsoft Azure. I would typically use Backblaze, but Backblaze is located in the US. And in this case, the customer has legal and contractual obligations to keep their data within Canada. So for that reason, okay, we're gonna go Microsoft Azure. They have Canadian data centers. It's good, fine. So there are going to be other backups that we can retrieve data from if we really need to. These are just the quick and easy because it's a function of ZFS. You can do these snapshots and it makes it really, really easy to be able to just pull it off the device. And that's a bonus for administrators like me. That's a huge bonus because I can just go to the device and pull the data out. And for some things, like your every 20 minutes backups, there's no way your cloud sync is going to be working with that level of granularity. I have had customers who have said, this is amazing. This is a game changer. You know, I, I, I can say, oh, I, I made this change at like 830. Okay, well, I can roll back to 820 and get the version of the file that I had then and I don't have to worry about, oh, the last backup was made at seven o'clock and under a Windows shadow copy, for example, the last backup was made at seven o'clock and I did like two hours worth of work in there. No, no, we can roll back to wherever you wanted within 20 minute, a 20 minute window. And that's been a benefit that they've liked. So I roll with it. And if I need to start purging snapshots or reduce the frequency, because of data space usage, I can do that. Data space usage issues. I'm tripping all over my words this morning. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> but that's pretty quick, I realize. But that's basically what I would go through to set up a new data set. It's just create the data set, create the share, and then set up the periodic snapshots for it. <sighs> I almost feel like that's too short a video. Hmm. Well, maybe it's a refreshing change from all of the, you know, half hour long, here's how to do automated Windows installation stuff that I've been doing. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully then that has been at least an interesting look, something that is different hopefully even enriching or useful for you. In any case, as always, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions on other things you'd like to see me cover, feel free to let me know down in the comments. And otherwise, thank you very much for joining us. I am your next door net admin, and we will see you next time.